They'll be calling you a radical. So I'm going to give you an update on the whimper going out with a whimper on standing crock. I mean, standing rock. I'm disgusted as an activist. I don't think I've ever been more disgusted of a movement in my life. And I want to say this to the people that stayed out there to the bitter end and the tiny, tiny handful of vets that held the line. I mean, there's 30 or 40 people that are left there. I got a lot of respect for you. Incredible amount of respect. You're not a fair weather activist. I'm disgusted with this movement as an activist. Look, when I commit, like I walked the entire coast of California full of leukemia with the central line hanging out of me, documented tide pools, I had no media coverage. I had nobody to me, but I've got it out and I've been all in. I mean, when you commit to activism, you commit to activism, period. You know, this fair weather activism is killing us. The hypocrites, I'm disgusted. I've never been so disgusted in a movement in my entire life. Because that movement had a lot of momentum. You really had the wind behind yourselves. You had the strength. You had the one thing that we all lack. You had the one thing that we all lack. You had the media on your side. You had the populace. You had the world populace on your side. Speaking of activists, there's a good one right there. That's it, brother. So, but I'm disgusted. I can't tell you how much of that. Look, the fair weather activists that went out there and you own the whole native thing, bro, they asked us to leave. Look, native tribal leaders have been selling out their own tribes for 400 years. It's nothing new. So you just left. No, because the weather was nice. It's nice to travel to South Dakota in the summer. It's beautiful. It's grand. It's, it's incredible. You know? It's a sad commentary. I'm disgusted as the activist. I, I, I don't think I've ever been disgusted. These hypocrites, you know, and even Amy, Democracy Now! and all that fake bullshit. It was tripe. It was... You could have won. You could have won. You could have won. That's where the thing is. People don't get it. Activism is hard fucking work. Really hard work. So what it got accomplished out there? Toxic black smoke fires today. Look at the live feed. That's what got accomplished. Do I win? No, a mega loss. Set us backwards. That's a problem with like my, move, my work. I'm an activist that wins. I'm tactical, I'm strong. And when the cameras are out, I don't get any attention. I'm grassroots. My activism doesn't feel good, and it's not easy. It's hardcore as fuck. Brutal. Actually brutal. There's times I wake up when I'm doing my things, and some of the places I'm in where I'm like, what am I going to do? What am I going to eat? How am I going to survive? On my own, by myself, you know, white shirts, cops all over me. But I dance on the line. I don't break the law because I don't need to break the fucking law. I've never been a fan of squatting and occupying. Never been a fan of that. I'm one of the groups that started Occupy. It wasn't called Occupy. We called it Post Ignorance at Washington Square in 2010. It was Anonymous who started that, who evolved in Anonymous, which evolved into Million Mass March. You know, but Fukushima happened two weeks earlier, and then I got cancer. You know, and look at the activism I do with cancer, with full of AML leukemia. Played a count of 30. <sighs> I had never been so disgusted. And like I said, the small group that hung in there to the Britter, and I can't say how much I respect you. You know, I was watching Life Cam, and I don't get that emotional anymore. I mean, I did in my cancer fight. You know, it'll be coming up on my five years, the first, March 1st. I got really emotional today watching this come to an end, and I'll tell you why. Because all the hard work that we do and fight as real activists, there's a few of us out there that are hardcore, and we keep losing. Because the grandstand bandwagon fucking jumpers and their radio shows and their fucking podcasts and their fucking basements and their clickbait bullshit fucking, you know, feel good. Let's go out there. Let's drive some wood out there just to fucking be part of the fucking winning team. They make me sick. They literally make me fucking sick. You fucking kill us. You know, I'm a fool to do all the dirty work. And the small group that's out there, you know, I watch his videos every day, Mr. Dave, you know, and for me. He was fantastic. He hung into the better fucking end. He didn't go there, fucking come back. Let's go on vacation. That's what it turned into. You know, and I would like to say this, all the fair weather fucks that went out there. Did vid interviews, all interview, fucking mainstream fucking media, which is alternative media, which is, I, I mean, alternative media is worse than mainstream media. Go fuck yourselves, every one of you. You should be fucking disgusted. What you've done to people like me. You know, there's a small group of us out there 
You know, and I know who they are because I'm in these hearings. I'm in this fucking fight all the fucking way. I was a millionaire when I got sick, you know? Even then, I mean, I f everybody knows my path as the activist. I mean, it's brutal. You set us back so fucking far. What you did to us, you know, you fucking fake fucks can go fuck yourselves, every one of them. You know, the only ones, the people that I have respect for and that of that fucking 10,000 of you fuckers scampered like little fucking two-bit bitches. Because that's what you are. The small group that hung in there to the brutal end out there, fuck, I can't tell you how much, I, I mean, you guys are the shit. You know, there's one vet out there right now. I want to get his time. He's going to go down. You know, they're offering him the little fucking deal to go get civil disobedience right now as we speak at this exact moment. Or the rest, you know, we're coming in. And, you know, they're going to charge them with felonies and destroy their fucking lives. And, let, you know, and if you think you're going to get media attention, the media will turn their back on you. Look, you're going to get arrested. They will turn your back on you, just like they did, you know, on Megan Rice. 85-year-old fucking nun they threw in prison. Broke into white 12. You don't think that took guts? Put her in a holding facility, built the hold for fucking three weeks for three and a half years, turned down the temperature 56 degrees. And the media ran and scampered like two bit bitches. I'm the only media that reported it. You know, and the media that went out there, the RT, you know, the fucking Amy, you can kiss my fucking ass, every one of you feel good fucks. It was all clickbait. That's all you were doing. Fuck you. You know, like I said, you know, Fukushima back in vogue in the fucking lamestream media and the fucking alternative scumbaggery. They've been coming to me again. You should hear the way I talk to them. Oh, I get a lot of them that want to do interviews. I'm like, go fuck yourself. Why would I do a media with you betraying fucking rats and owl? I'm the fucking media. To be popularized and clickbait and have a huge fucking verse to be a failure. You know, I, every time I get in vogue and start getting all these fucking panty painter softball, I make sure I do a video that really pulls back. A guy in California told me, Patrick says, God, I can't believe the way you'll get a tremendous momentum and then you just go right at them. Because all they do to me, the contemporary fucking feel good fucking so God part time keyboard fucking you know, armchair activists, you know, whatever. All they do is waste my fucking time. I don't have time to police my states. I don't have time to educate them. I don't have time for their fucking ridiculous comments. I don't have time. Because they're not going to do anything anyway. They're not going to do anything anyway. You know, to the few that are out there right now, going down to the Bruder Inn, you know, that live cast it out there, that said videos every day, I love you guys. But you're talking fucking, you know, maybe 50 people. And to the... Hierarchy of the native tribes that sold you off, fuck you, you fucking rats. The other side holds a very nice fucking place for you. Right there with Obama and Bush and Bill Walmart Clinton. I will quote Cecil Rhodes here at the end. Twice, Cecil Rhodes. We should form secret societies to, we are the elites. We are the, well not elites, he didn't say that. We are the chosen lottery, the British Empire. We should take advantage of lands and expand our lands and expand slave labor. And I'll, I'll post the quotes in here. You know, <laughs> the Masonics, oh fuck, they were panty painters. They were a fucking church mice compared to this fucking secret society, which is called fucking skull and bones. Fucking, and the useful idiots they have all over the internet. It's a disgrace how this fucking ended. It's a fucking disgrace. So, the activists, so-called, they're not the activists, you know, but I always fall back on this. I know that it's always tactical. It's really one person or a small, teeny group that ever make a difference, you know. You don't even, I mean, what I'm up against right fucking now, I mean, whoa, whoa. Taking on the nuclear crime syndicate? Oh, fucking A, I am. You haven't seen the last of me, you know step back, every one fucking, uh, fucking, that's just the way it is. What a fucking sad end. And everybody that fucking grandstanding and bandwagon jump, they ought to fucking be ashamed of themselves. It's disgusting what you did to the real activists. Stay in tune it.